Some days you're up and other days you're down. Always tip the dealers and when your waitress comes around Cause sometimes you punt and other times you're round And you might get cooler to flop the nuts when you sit down The outcome of the hand don't mean that you made it Cause life's not about the result but more on how you played it Hitting eights, nines, and tens and all the painted faces Every day you play is a win even if you're mucking aces What's up, y'all? This is episode 11 of the Mucky Naces Poker Vlog. We are headed over to Grayton Casino. We are going to hop into the 1-3 game or the 2-5 game. Hopefully, we can get in the game pretty quickly here on a Saturday evening. And we look forward to seeing you at the tables. Wish us luck. All right, in this very first hand, we pick up six, seven of diamonds. We're ready to mix it up as we had been waiting to get a seat for quite a long time here. We waited for about two and a half hours just to get a seat as the poker room was jam-packed and unfortunately I forgot to call in so definitely a big mistake there. We go eight ways to a flop in a family style pot with the flop coming king jack five with two spades. I'm just going to check it back when it checks to me and it looks like everyone here is timid and content to just keep checking it around as we go to a turn card which comes out the four of diamonds and once again everyone just keeps checking it down. When the river card comes out a seven of hearts for me, I go ahead and throw out a bet of just five dollars thinking that with my pair hitting with the six and the seven I can maybe just get a crying call. But good news, somebody in the under the gun position decides to throw out a bet as they are non-believing of my $5 bet thinking I'm just trying to take it down there. They throw out a bet of $45. So when I throw out that bet of $5 and they raise me, I'm thinking that they're not repping anything um, at all. So I make the call pretty quickly and they let me know that they were just looking to rack up and leave and that I got it. So they don't even show their hand. I show my seven and we take this one down. Happy to scoop this pot here pretty quickly in the evening once I sit down with uh, this six, seven of diamonds uh, suited connector hand. Uh, not the best, but happy to take it. And the next playable hand that I pick up, I'm under the gun with king queen offsuit. I decide to lead out here and make it 10 more to go. I get two colors. I'm about 560 effective and we go to see a flop which comes five queen nine rainbow. With my top pair and a decent kicker, I'm going to make a C bet. I throw out a bet here of another $25 to see if anyone wants to come along and they decide both to fold. So I'm definitely skeptical of all the players here at the table seeing how timid they might be here to start out but uh, it's good for me as I'm happy to take down these small pots and just keep building the stack. A little while later I pick up a six in the cutoff and we are about $400 effective as the player who is under the gun decides to limp in and once it folds around to me I decide to bump it up a little. I make it 10 more and the player who is in the small blind decides to make the call and the player who originally limped in decides to make the call as well. So we go three ways to the flop and that flop is going to come out pretty good for my specific hand. It comes out ace, six, eight and with top and bottom pair here 
I think that I'm going to be able to extract some value. So I decide to lead out for uh, $40 here and we get one caller. This player in the small blind decides to make the call for the additional 40. We go to a turn which comes the Jack of Spades and with this card coming out I think that my hand is still good with the two pair as he checks to me. So I continue my story here and make it 75 more to see if I can start to get all the money in here. He goes well into the tank and actually just decides to finally make the fold. So I take this one down. And a short time later, we pick up a premium hand in the form of Ace King of Spades. With this suited Ace King, I'm going to bump it up. So I make it 15 more to go under the gun and I get two callers. The player who is in the hijack makes the call and also the player who is in the big blind. So we go three ways to the flop with about $600 effective and we see an amazing flop for us. It comes out 10 Jack Queen and that gives us pretty much the nuts here. So I'm going to throw out a small bet of $25 once the big blind player checks to me and both players decide to make the call. I'm hoping here to get a ton of money in the pot, so let's see if we can build up the pot here as much as we can, but also trying to keep both players in. Once the turn comes a king, I'm really thinking that this is pretty much the worst card for us, as now any ace gets there. So it gets checked to me. I throw out a large over bet of $100 and the player who is in the hijack goes well into the tank. He thinks about it for probably about two to three minutes and then he finally decides on the call. Once he makes the call, the player in the big blind stops to think about it for just a few moments before deciding to go all in. So once he does that, I think about it for just a moment, uh, looking over the board just to make sure I didn't miss anything, and I decide to make the call. Now he does have me covered, which is roughly about $600. And once I make the call, the hijack player stops and tank folds so we end up finally going to a river with about fourteen hundred dollars in the pot and the river comes an inconsequential six of diamonds we both flip over our cards and we both have an ace so we'll split that one up in the next playable hand we pick up ace four off suit and we are running fairly well and steamrolling the table so we put the straddle on under the gun for an additional six dollars and we go three ways to the flop here with me being the deep stack at the table so far and we are about two hundred dollars effective as there are some short stacks here we see the flop come out ace seven three with two spades so with top pair I decide to make a continuation bet I throw out a bet of $25 making it 47 to go in the pot and both players end up folding so we take down the dead money here once again and I'd like to take the time to ask everyone to hit that like button and please subscribe as I pick up pocket jacks here in middle position and with this premium hand I'm going to bump it up and I make it 20 more to go the main villain in this hand is directly on my left he thinks about it for a moment he's this player before who has been tanking for quite a while and he makes the call 
and also the player in the big blind make the call. We go to the flop, which is 7-5 queen, and I decide to throw it a bet here once it gets checked to me. So I make it 45 more, and the player here on my left immediately jams the rest of his stack in, which was about $130 left behind. So once he does that, the player in the big blind makes the fold, and I just decide to make the call. Hopefully the variance is on my side. We see a nine come on the turn and a king come on the river. I flip over my hand and I get slow rolled by the villain's pocket nine. So unfortunately he sucked out there on the turn and we are gonna lose this one. About an hour goes by and we pick up king queen offsuit after not having very many playable hands for quite a while being pretty card dead so I'm going to bump it up here under the gun see if I can get anyone to come along and we go to a flop three ways which comes king jack four with a rainbow board out there. I'm going to throw out a, another continuation bet. I decide on a sizing of $20 and once the turn comes, I decide to lead out again. That turn being the nine of spades. Unfortunately, I don't get anyone to come along with my top pair. So we're just gonna scoop this one once, once again. again. And a little later on, we pick up Ace-10 offsuit. The straddle is on. We are going to make it a live six here under the gun. And we go heads up to a flop, which comes five, ace, three. With top pair and a flush draw, I'm putting this opponent on a similar ace, possibly ace-9, uh, ace-8. Hopefully he doesn't have me beat or outkicked here at this point. I'm not putting him on any sort of middling pocket pair as I think that he would have raised me pre-flop. So once I throw out this bet of $20 and he makes the call, we go to a turn card which comes out the seven of clubs and he quickly checks to me. I decide on a sizing of $25 here in this spot. I think that I could have sized up, but I felt like I may have been value owning myself. I'm definitely results oriented here in this situation, which I shouldn't have been. So once the river card comes out, the jack of diamonds, and he throws out a bet of $40. I go into the tank for a moment here just thinking of what he could possibly have. I get a little bit curious and make the call for the $40 more. I think that the price was too good and he definitely took me for some value there at the end. He quickly flips over ace jack and I think that I could have folded there on the river as this definitely looked like a value bet. Well, he's going to take this one, so nice hand. Then a little while later, we pick up ace-queen offsuit, and we are in the big blind, and we decide we're going to bump it up once it limps around to us, but we don't get the opportunity to do that. The player to my right is going to bump it up in the small blind, and he is going to do so by shoving all in for his last $157 or so. I snap call as he has been saying that he's going to leave and has been shoving over the last couple of hands with his smaller stack. And I think that I do have a good chance here of being ahead, possibly being behind to a middling pocket pair. So we go to a run out, which comes ace eight three. And I go ahead and flip over my ace-queen once the ace comes on the flop. 
and he lets me know in disgust that he is now behind and he is looking for some more help. A two comes on the turn and a king comes on the river and he throws his cards into the muck face up. He had pocket jacks, so definitely got a little bit of luck there on our side. A little bit of run good to take down this roughly $320 pot. So happy to take this one down at the end of the night. What can I say? Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. So in this last hand at the end of the night, I'm going to go over and get a rack. So I'm starting to pack up my stuff here and I pick up pocket jacks and the player to my right in the big blind, the same player from before, did add back on and he asked me a question before deciding if he wants to go heads up as it folds around. You have the jackpot hand? I tell him yes that I do and that I can check it down with him. So we are going to go to a flop as I know that he has pocket threes and hopefully we can win $250,000 that we can split with the table. Unfortunately, the run out does not come in our favor, but it does come in mine in the form of catching another jack and I hit a set on the flop, but no more threes come and no more jacks come. So if we would have had his quad threes get beat by my quad jacks, uh, definitely would be a lot different story here in this vlog, but uh, happy to rack up a win and I appreciate everyone for watching. All right, y'all. Thanks so much for tuning in to episode 11 of the Mucky Naces Poker Vlog. I definitely appreciate everyone who's dropped a thumbs up on the video. Thanks so much for hitting that subscribe button. Helps out the channel a whole lot. So we got into the game at Grayton Casino in the 1-3 for $500, which was the max buy-in. We got out for $712. So I'll have the numbers up here next to me in the screen. I appreciate everyone who has purchased some of the merch with the link down in the subscription below. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Peace.